Hi family, here we are again with some prophecies of the ancestors, one of my favorite subjects. Um, and I'm just really here strictly referring at this point up until now, only the prophecies of the ancestors on this side of the world. So when you start to get into the eastern side, it gets a little bit more mystical and uh, you really do need to suspend your belief systems <laughs> because uh, especially here in the West, we tend to look at, you know, things like this with a very literal perspective, you know. Um, okay, we want to think about allegory and storytelling. Okay, so um, this next prophecy, uh, we've already covered the Pachacutec and the 500-year prophecy. This one we'll cover. It's also a Mesoamerican um, prophecy. And it's called the prophecy of the eagle and the condor. So what is the eagle and the condor? What is that thing? I don't know. I'm going to just point you up here again. Real, I don't know if you can see this. That eagle there. And then down here is the snake. So the eagle flying up here in Father Sky represents the masculine. Left side of the, of the hemisphere of your brain. Also the left as it happened, just what a coincidence, the left side of the world is also. Uh, and then the right side of the brain is more feminine, um, more, and the feminine is, 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 is traditionally referred to throughout history, even before the written word, uh, was referred to as um, the serpent, or the relation you can see of this in the Garden of Eden and all that stuff. Um, the stories about the Garden of Eden and, Eden and the apple and the snake and Eve and all that other stuff, right? So, um, so it, it's it's making reference to it's saying that the eagle and the condor, two physical rep animals in the in the world that represent the masculine and the feminine, that are going to come together in unity. And I and I do this a lot. You'll see this a lot. Divine feminine, divine masculine. Mm hmm. And then that which they give birth to in the world, that, that solid foundation, that, that is the first geometric pattern of life, right? That's why they did the pyramids like that. Um, so uh, this meeting of the masculine and the feminine coming together refers to, uh, going back to the hermetic principles, as above, so below, as within, so without. So first within myself, that those two must align. If they don't align, then nary the twain shall meet. And that's fine for the purpose of exploring the devolution, you know, the devolutionary period of our consciousness. But now as we're coming back into this cycle and the 500-year prophecy is coming on, online and the eagle and the condor are coming to meet, it's making a reference, right, to the, to the, the out-of-balance feminine that just has no boundaries, right, and is just destroying everything. And... Um, um, and, 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 and that's going to come back down to where it's supposed to be to meet the masculine where, where the divine masculine, where he's at. And then once we get this inner Trinity established within ourselves, then that which we project into the world will be a mirror reflection of that, which is within. So please, uh, I'm not, all, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to none of that toxic masculinity shit or that feminine neo-feminist um I, I no i'm not having it no um we are in the end of the kali yuga and um and i'll i'll save kali for another video because it's well it's another sort of prophecy if you will another character but from the other side of the world so I just wanted to share that with you about the eagle and the condor and the union of the trinity within, as within, so without. And uh, the prophecy says too, um, <laughs> is that um, these uh, the eagle and the condor are going to meet here in Mexico, in the heart of Mexico. So there's a lot of magic here. Um, and uh, yeah, I, so I want to share that with you, family, because it's important to understand the and listen to the stories of the ancestors and, and, you know, and just remember that, you know, like, let's say you are one of these folks that has or could potentially do, uh, subscribe to the, 
the dogma of the, you know, any of the, of the, how do you say, like, like, let's just say, we'll just, we'll just say Christianity and just leave it at that. But, um, like, you know, if you want to like get all caught up in that last book of the Bible and revelations and the apocalypse and death and destruction and all this other, you know, doom and gloom and stuff like that, just remember that the people that, that, that remember, go back to the first book of the Bible, chapter six of Genesis and tell me who is us and them when it says let us create god uh, let us create man in our image who's us and our who are they in a monotheistic religion so it tells you right up it's always disclosure but no one pays attention <laughs> because they want to believe what they want to believe um and they don't want to question things or use discernment so this is not the word of god this thing they call the bible <laughs> And it doesn't have to go down like that, right? It doesn't have to go down. Like, that's just one story. That's one group of sick individuals' idea, right? There's other ways of perceiving it, right? And um, and it's important that we understand and, and, and are at least made aware of these different perspectives of the ancestors to describe how time moves and... Um, and what we have come through and what we are going through right now and what we can perhaps, you know, take a look at to the future, what we will go through. So um, uh, I invite you to always explore and always reach out to your First Nations tribes and ask them to share these stories with you because they are important uh, for our sacred imaginations to counter um, the, the, the unholy rituals okay of the um of the so-called um you know holy books and um and, and prophecies you know of 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 um well i'm just gonna be honest men that were controlled by off-world intelligence reptiles basically um um and i don't mean to offend any christians out there now i'm not I, that's not the purpose of my channel or any at any point of any of the things i'm sharing i'm not trying to offend or piss off anybody yeah I'm just saying, but if you feel that dissonance inside you, then as within, so without. Just like if something somebody says really triggers you, it's probably your electromagnetic feedback that you need, that you are out of dissonance and out of touch. Uh, otherwise, if you're, if you're standing in truth, then you don't really need to get emotional about it. <laughs> you don't. Um... But um, I, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm just, I'm just pointing out that I read that book. I read that Bible many times. I'm very familiar with it. Um, and I prefer to read the Old Testament. You know, if you're going to get into a book, you should start at the beginning. Hmm? Okay, so, um, yeah, but anyhow. I'll leave that with you, family, and I encourage you to reach out to your First Nations people. Look for some, there's lots of stuff online, too. I want to share this one. I want to give a big, big, big shout out to a channel on YouTube called 68 Voices. And there's another channel with which I don't recall the name of the channel itself, but the name of the video, there's a couple of them. They're animated films, and they're like 15 minutes each. And one of them is called... Uh, La Creación Según de los Huicholes, or the story of the creation according to the Huichole people. Um, beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And um, I encourage you to, to broaden your perspective by introducing other perspectives of um, some of the indigenous and the, um, and the First Nations people. Okay, so family, um, have a beautiful day until we speak for, uh, again. Till the next time, take good care of yourself and... Um, uh, Ciao for now. Bye-bye.